So these companies keep sending me lithium iron phosphate batteries, so we're gonna upgrade the solar shed. And currently we already have 540 watts on the roof and 270 watts over there, but we need a bigger battery. And here is the new system. This thing is pretty powerful and has a massive battery. So first we have two MPP 2.4 kilowatt inverters connected in parallel for a split phase output or 240 volts. And over here we have an Outback Power MPPT FlexMax 60 amp output. This thing is incredible. And these are the parallel communication wires and this is the AC output that supplies the panel. And if you follow the orange cables, it goes over to our distribution panel. And this cable goes outside to a 240 volt receptacle so I can charge the Tesla pretty quickly. And the panel also supplies this surge strip and it also has a light. And I really like this thing. It powers this light right here. Now let's talk about the battery configuration. First, we have a BYD pack, and this is 3.76 kilowatt hours. Then over here, we have fortune cells, and this is 100 amp hours at 24 volts. And then down here, we have the bulk majority of the capacity. So we have four Battleborns, and we have two Lion Energy, and they are all connected in series and parallel for 24 volts. And I'm going to build this battery second, and then I'm going to build this battery third. These look like different size cells, but these are 100 amp hours, so I'm going to put them in series and add a BMS and add this to the Frankenstein battery. And I'm sure people want to know how I use these fortune cells. I just added a Dally BMS. So this does not have low temperature charging protection, but I'm in Las Vegas, and considering the size of this battery bank and the charge rate with our solar array, it's trickle charging this. It will take multiple days to charge. So even if it is freezing, you're not going to have lithium plating. Um, I actually been talking to a friend that's been doing research on that. And for this size solar battery bank, you will not have plating at all, even if it is really cold. Also during winter, you have a reduced amount of sunshine. So the charge rate will be reduced even further. So I'm not really concerned about this. I'm just going to run it like this and see what happens. And this is the best way to test it. If there's a short circuit this winter, then I'm going to tell you guys never to do this ever. But we can test it. So that's fun. I was actually going to do a 48 volt system with 6 kilowatt it's split phase, but I vouched for using 24 volt system instead because all of these manufacturers keep giving me 12 and 24 volt batteries. And to make 48 volt batteries, I would have a lot of mismatched cells. So for maximum capacity and safety reasons, we're going with 24 volts. Also, it's easier to charge with small arrays. If I were using a 48 volt battery, then I would have to have a working voltage of 60 volts and an open circuit voltage of 80 volts. But with 24 volts, I could put a couple panels on the ground and as a backup source of power, it's easy to charge these batteries. Also, we have some new distribution blocks or bus bars so I can connect more batteries at any time. If I wanna make the system really big, I just connect them right here and we are good to go. All of the solar panels on the roof of the solar shed, the 540 watts, actually goes through the Outback Power MPPT over here. And this thing is really nice. One of my viewers was like, Will, you're an idiot. You need to use the higher quality, more expensive stuff and just test it out. And he was right, man. This has every UL listing and safety certification under the sun. It has ceramic capacitors, so it will last a very long time. And he wasn't joking. This thing is so easy to use. The logging, um, programming, absorption, and float, it's amazing. I love the FlexMax by Outback. So this is a 60 amp MPPT, which is complete overkill. So we have the solar wires, they come in and there is no circuit breaker on them because it's a series string and it's a very small solar array. If it was larger or we had parallel strings, then I would have to have a circuit breaker somewhere on here, depending on how the solar array is wired. And so one array goes to this MPPT and then one array goes to this one. So we have a third available slot and this could be upgraded. We can put 2000 watts through this one, 2000 watts through this one. And I don't even know how much this is. I have to calculate that out. Oh wait, it's 60 amps. So it's gonna be less than that. Hold on. Oh, this one can only handle 1400 watts max, but think about how much that is. That's like 5,400 watts through this little tiny system. 
So it's a pretty simple system. We can handle multiple arrays. It's very sturdy for long-term use. And inverters like to fail. These are cheap inverters. They're not UL listed. But this MPPT will not fail. This will last for decades. And that's what I think matters most. Also, this has multiple boards though, and you can easily service these. Some people think that an all-in-one system means that you can't repair them, and that is far from the case. You can absolutely pull every board out of this and repair whatever you need to. So these are really good for a backup system no matter what. Also these are scalable, so I can make this system massive, which I really like. Also, I experimented a lot with multiple crimpers, and I like this one a lot. It does not crimp as beautifully as a hydraulic crimper, but this thing kicks butt. If you want a solid one, it's only $60. So yeah, this thing is awesome. I've, I built this whole system with this. Also, I bought the iWIS. I do not like this. This totally messes up crimps that are anything larger than 6 gauge. So don't buy this in my opinion, it has good reviews, but I'm telling you, if you put a true copper lug in here with the proper gauge wire and the proper gauge lug, it looks horrible. So yeah, just a random update. I would not buy this again. I, I feel kind of ripped off. And what's really nice about this system is how many circuit breakers and fuses. Every single battery over here has its own BMS with OCPD protection. And then over here, this one has its own circuit breaker as well. And then there's fuses over here. Everything is fused and protected. Um, and the proper gauge wire is used as well. So it might not be that pretty, but it is absolutely safe. And what matters most with these large systems is ensuring that you have a proper crimp connection on every single connection. I have had systems almost catch on fire when I was younger, so you need to make sure that the wire that you use is high quality, that the lugs that you use is high quality, and they are combined with a true gas tight junction cold weld. And I actually just got a 48 volt battery yesterday, and we're going to add it to this 48 volt inverter. This a lot of people ask about, but it's very easy to use. You just connect the battery and then you have split phase output. You don't have to do any programming or actually you do, you have to change one setting on here, but it's super simple. Anybody could figure it out. If I was going for only one inverter that was large and I had a 48 volt battery, it would probably be this one. And there's not much difference between this inverter and the new Grow Watts. The Grow Watts have a slightly different screen and a couple other options, but they're not that different. Um, most of the options are identical, and all of these MPP and Grow Watt inverters are made by Voltronic. So you're not getting anything special whether you buy one or the other. What you are getting is a better, easier to read manual with the Grow Watt, and it comes with a parallel communication board, and some people say it's a better warranty, and I personally like it because the manual is easier to read. But both of them are just as good. So yeah, we're going to do that in another video. Also, the BYD pack has been working great, but they are out of stock right now. So if you want to get one of these, you need to wait until they get their shipment of BMSs because the slowdown in the economy right now, a lot of things are delayed, but they will have lots of these available. They have like a couple hundred left. So yeah, these things are great. I love it. So let's actually calculate the total capacity of this battery because I still don't know. This system has 14 kilowatt hours of usable capacity with lithium iron phosphate. I'm also going to use this system to power an air conditioner for the summer. It's going to get crazy hot in here, but so far with the insulation and now that the solar panels are shading it and some other insulation things that I'm going to do, it should stay relatively cool, but we'll find out in about a month or two. And that's pretty much it guys. It's a pretty simple system. Um, it's the system that you guys saw before, but just beefed up and with more batteries. But yeah, 14 kilowatt hours. Actually, let me see how many miles I can get with my Tesla. I can get 56 miles for my Tesla with this system. And we could charge in like three and a half hours. Actually, I should add this one and this one. That would give me a usable capacity of... That would give me 19 kilowatt hours, you guys. Just with this pack and this little pack down here. Man, if I hit 20 kilowatt hours, that would be absolutely incredible. In the first day to test this, to actually do a full cycle, I pulled 9 kilowatt hours with my jacuzzi. And then I ran a heat gun until one of them tripped. And then I charged up the ones that were in safety mode. And everything works great. 
So yeah, the hardest part of this system was when I wanted to put them in series, I had to charge up all these batteries manually. So I ran the entire system off of the BYD pack and I charged up all the other batteries with the solar that was coming in in the BYD pack. Then I waited until the BYD pack was fully charged and then I series and parallel connected everything. And then it works, so yeah, it's all done. Anyways, that's a lot of talking, but yeah, you guys get the idea. It's super cool, super powerful. I'm going to add more solar. If I really needed to and the grid went down, I would still be able to drive my Tesla. That is the main point of this system. So yeah, I'm super stoked. Also, if I added a backup generator automatic transfer switch on my panel, which any electrician could put in, I could do it. I'm a little scared though. Those are pretty big wires, man. And AC next to service lines, I don't, I'm just a little scared. But I could do it and then I could run my entire house off of this system. I would be hard pressed though with these tiny inverters. I don't think I'd be able to run the air conditioner. But very powerful, I'd be able to run everything else. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I will talk to you later. Bye.